guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Nikki, to those of you that are seeing my face for the first time. And today, just like the title says, I'm gonna be sharing with you what me and my family eats in a week. Now, I am a foodie. I really like to change up my food every day if possible. I definitely am also a creature of habit. I eat similar things regularly, but part of the joy of life for me is definitely mixing up food. And so today I'm gonna be showing you guys five different breakfast ideas that we ate in a week. Now, something that has changed a little bit for me and my eating in general in life is that, well, A, I don't really do intermittent fasting anymore. Sometimes I do it kind of accidentally or like it's just kind of how it pans out. And when that happens, I'm kind of like, okay, well, if people are right about intermittent fasting, then this is good for my body. But in general, I'm not like actively pursuing intermittent fasting anymore. And when I wake up in the morning, I try to eat within 30 minutes to an hour of rising. I think that different tactics, different eating plans work for different people at different phases in their life. But for me and where I'm at, someone who is trying to conceive a child soon in life and keep my hormones balanced, I'm feeling like this is the best move for me. Not only not fasting at this moment in time, but also you guys will notice I, purposefully consume animal products, particularly eggs. Now, not all of these recipes are egg-based because I just didn't wanna do that to you guys, but I do definitely love eating eggs. And um, I wanna throw this out there as well. This food was for me and my family, but we didn't all eat it every single day because Dan actually makes these really good waffles from scratch. And I'd say half of the mornings, Dan and Logie really just wanna eat their waffles with maple syrup and butter on top. That's not my jam. I pretty much never do waffles. Um, so this is really like what I spearhead for breakfast and then I see kind of how they're feeling and if they want it, they eat it too. If not, they go for waffles, which Dan actually makes in bulk and then freezes. Similarly to what I do to sourdough bread and my sourdough bagels, I make them in bulk and I freeze them. If you're new to my channel and you feel like it, feel free to subscribe by clicking the button down below. Also give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and please let me know in the comment section down below if you would like to see more videos like this, if you have any video requests, and if you do really like this video, I actually uploaded five dinner recipe ideas, so I will try to remember to link that down below. Last but not least, I wanna give a special shout out to my Patreon and all of my patrons. Thank you so much for all of your support. And if you're interested in like chatty, laid back kind of videos, I definitely cover some controversial topics, but I do over here as well. And then I just kind of talk about other things as well. I recently uploaded a video on 10 ways to lift your mood, which I feel like we can all use on some days at this point in life. So with all of that being said, there goes Zoe running off the couch. Let's hop right in. All right, guys. So we are starting with my most basic bay go-to breakfast. And I'm starting off by getting out my sourdough bagels from the freezer. Now, if you've not seen my video on how I make sourdough bagels, they're not only the best bagels I've ever had in my life, but they're not as difficult as you would think. They're super simple, clean ingredients, and I will link that video down below. So I pulled my bagel out of the freezer, toasted it at seven, which is the highest that my toaster goes. And then while that was happening, I cooked up two fried eggs in some avocado oil, which I definitely didn't need to pour that much oil in there, but just roll with it. I put some salt and pepper on top, by the way, I buy my eggs from Costco currently. I like how dark orange the yolks are. And once my bagels were very toasty, I pulled them out of the toaster. I flipped my eggs, let those cook for a minute. And then I put a heavy amount of my Irish butter on top. I used to use Kerrygold, now I use Kirkland's butter because it's more affordable and it's just as tasty and dark yellow. And then of course, on the side, I had to have some iced tea. So I had been letting my tea brew in the window and I poured it over some ice once it had brewed to a point that I was, you know, happy with it brewing too. By the way, we recently got these glass straws and they're amazing. Like my whole family loves them. Dan's obsessed with them, but we all love them. And that was my breakfast. Also the tea was a raspberry matcha green tea. And then of course on the side, I had to have my little shot glass with some supplements, which I totally take every morning and I don't know that I showed them every morning. So 
we'll see, but I do take supplements in the morning. All right, so the next morning I decided I wanted to make an omelet, but Logan loves cracking eggs for me. Like he is my go-to egg cracker when I can remember. He also likes to crush garlic and a couple other things around the kitchen. And he was begging to crack my eggs this morning. So I let him do that for me in a bowl. And then I let him also help me whisk the eggs together, stir them together so that everything was nice and blended. I don't know if I showed this, but I also like to add my seasoning, my salt and pepper, maybe a little garlic powder into the eggs while I'm mixing them up. Then I had this sweet potato that needed to be used. So I chopped that up and diced it into little cubes. I also diced up some onion. I pulled out some spinach and also some butter for the pan. So once my butter had melted on the pan, I cooked up my sweet potato. And I like to do that first because obviously the potato has to cook a little bit more than like, you know, my onions or my spinach. I added some salt to the pan while that was cooking as well as some garlic powder. And once my potatoes had had a chance to soften up a bit and cook, I threw in my white onions to the mix and stir fried that. By the way, here's a little shot of what Logie was eating for breakfast. <laughs> Gotta have blueberries in every hole, guys. So once my veggies had fully cooked, I threw my spinach in there at the very end just to let it cook a little bit and wilt down. Now at this point, I heated up my large pan with some avocado oil to get it ready for my omelet. And then while the pan and the oil was heating up, I grated some cheddar cheese. Then once the oil had had a chance to heat up, which you want it to get pretty warm, I poured my egg into the pan and I kind of directed where the eggs were going to go into a circle. Then once the eggs were almost fully cooked, I put my cheese on the omelet. I like to lay my cheese in the omelet first before my toppings. It helps to make sure that the cheese is nice and melted. And then I added my toppings. I make omelets out of anything and everything. Like when I have leftover meat, I've made taco meat into omelets. I've put chicken in omelets. I've put bacon in omelets. I'm just a big omelet fan. <laughs> Now my chive plant is definitely dying. It's the end of the season for this plant, I'm assuming, because it seems to be just coming to an end. But I was able to go out and gather a few more chives, cut them up and put them on top of my omelet, which chives low key brings any like food to the next level when you put it on top. So I had that made and then I also decided to make a smoothie on the side to go with my omelet. So I threw in a bunch of spinach. I had a big old box of spinach from Costco that needed to be used. And speaking of Costco, I love this organic frozen blend of peaches, mangoes, strawberries, and pineapple. So I put in a bunch of that into the blender as well. I also had some raspberries that were about to start to be a little too mushy. So I threw those in the mix as well. Then I added the last little bit of my coconut water that I had on hand as well as some regular water. And by the way, I paused about halfway through because I realized that I actually forgot to add some honey to the mix. I love adding a little bit of raw organic honey into my smoothies. And on this morning, I was also sharing a smoothie with Logie, so I poured one for myself, one for him. By the way, yes, that is my old Fond mason jar, Fond bone broth. I keep them and I use them as little mini cups. And also drinking smoothies out of this glass straw is like the best thing ever. All right, so for this next breakfast, I wanted to make some oatmeal. So I started off by chopping up some of these organic pecans that I had gotten from Costco. Costco is like my jam in this video, apparently. It's kind of my jam in my life, but 
especially in this video. And I started off by candying my pecans. You guys know I will find any reason to make candied pecans. And I wanted to make some for my oatmeal on this morning. Now I actually ended up making too many, but that's fine because they last well in the fridge when they're done. Then I cooked up some organic old fashioned oats. I wish I had been soaking them the night before, but I didn't do that. So I started off just by rinsing off my oats and then I threw them in this pot to cook up with some water. So while my pecans were toasting on the stove top with a little bit of coconut oil, once they started to smell kind of warm, I sprinkled them with a little bit of salt and then continued to toss them around while they cooked. And then once I felt like they were pretty toasty, I poured on some of this organic maple syrup, which is also from Costco. And the sizzling that takes place when the maple syrup hits the pan is so satisfying. But you basically stir that around for a little bit till the maple syrup reduces and candies the pecans. So as my oatmeal was cooking, I also decided to throw in some hemp seeds just because I love them. I'm obsessed with the texture, but also it adds some extra protein and fat. And I just continued to let that cook and stir that all up. Near the end, I added in a little splash of vanilla extract. And then I also put in a little bit of maple syrup directly into the oatmeal. I typically like adding butter as well, but I think I forgot on this morning. Um, then we had recently gone berry picking, which you will see in an upcoming day in my life again, but I pulled out some of those fresh blueberries, which were amazing. And I threw them into my oatmeal. Once that was done cooking, I poured it into my bowl. Oh, there's the butter. I thought I had added some butter into the mix. I low key think that high quality, organic, grass fed butter is like a superfood. So, plus it tastes good. So, I kind of try to find reasons to add it into things. Then I took some of my candied pecans and I added those to the top of my oatmeal. And that was my breakfast and it was so good. And the candied pecans definitely take regular oatmeal and put it over the top. So this next recipe, if you watch all of my videos, you've definitely seen me make this before in a recent video actually. And this is a broccoli and cheddar egg bake. It is so good and it actually lasted me for a couple of days. So I started off by chopping up my broccoli florets and then I pulled out this chicken and apple sausage. So I started off by stir frying my broccoli and my sausage in the same pan. And I cooked this up for a few minutes and then decided to add a little bit of water as well because it was getting real toasty things were kind of getting stuck so i just kept cooking until everything seemed like well cooked and while i was doing it i also added in some garlic powder some onion powder and of course some salt Then I cracked up about eight eggs and I whisked them all together in this glass bowl. Then I shredded up a bunch of cheddar cheese on the side. Then to the egg mixture, I added some oat flour, some baking powder, as well as my grated cheddar cheese. And then once my broccoli and my sausage was done cooking, I added that to the mixture as well. Next up, I poured the mixture into a baking dish and spread everything across evenly and then threw it in the oven to bake. I believe at like 375 for maybe 20-ish minutes. I kind of just kept checking it until the center of the bake had set up as well. And let me tell you, this was so good. I can't recommend it enough. And I've actually heard that it freezes really well too. All right, now would it even be a what we eat in a week breakfast edition video without sharing avocado toast? I will tell you the answer. No, it would not be. So I started off by toasting up some of my frozen sourdough that I pulled out of the freezer. And then I opened up an avocado, you know, as you do and I spread my avocado over my toast. Now today's toast is not fully like my signature avocado toast recipe, but it's pretty close. You'll get the gist. Avocado toast is definitely like one of my favorite foods in general, but particularly for breakfast. Mm -hmm. 
then I did manage to wrangle together a little bit more chives from my chive plant and I chopped that up for the toast as well. I drizzled a little bit of olive oil on the top of the toast. Then I sprinkled my chives. I also put some red chili pepper flakes on top. Oh man, it is my signature toast. I thought I had used a different cheese, but alas, I did not. Goat cheese is like my signature avocado toast cheese topping. I love it so much. I didn't get footage of me doing this, but I know I did because I always do. I actually squeezed some lemon juice on top as well. And then I had a side, a big heaping side of the fresh blueberries that we had picked at a local farm that week. And this breakfast was delicious. I also had supplements on the side because I, like I said, if I even if I didn't show it, I take supplements with every breakfast. And then I had some more of my raspberry matcha green iced tea. And it was delicious and filling and yeah. All right guys, so that is it for this video. Like I said, please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. It really helps to support my channel. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. Check out my Patreon if you feel like it. And let me know what other videos you'd like to see here in the future. And with all of that being said, I will God willing see you guys back here soon with another new video. All right, bye guys. <laughs> bye.